Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, I want to start off by talking about the price of Bitcoin. Right now, it's sitting at $42,188, still looking bearish in the short term. As I've been stating for a long time, buy the rumor, sell the news event, which took place at the ETF launch. This is expected. It's something that has happened in the market before. The reason why I was calling for this is I've seen this story before, right? This is how markets play out. And this is why experience, studying the charts, understanding the fundamentals is so important. Now, that does not mean the bull market's over. That does not mean the music, the show is over. Folks, we are in the macro bull market. We are in early innings. Things are just heating up. These ETFs will continue to grow. More Bitcoin will be bought. There will be an Ethereum ETF launch and much more, right? So I'm certainly looking uh, towards higher prices this year, as well as a new all-time high, possibly this year, and a blow-off top in 2025. And not just for Bitcoin, but obviously to all coins as well. So expect volatility. There will be pullbacks, folks, even in the bull market. Yes, in the bull market, you can see 30 to 35% crashes. But the volatility is a beautiful thing. Once you understand it, you can use it to your advantage. You can swing trade. It allows you to get into the dips um, and dollar cost average uh, on the way up. Obviously, there's a point where you don't want to be buying, right? You want to be selling when we hit that euphoria phase and your Uber drivers and your uh, grandma are, are telling you about crypto. So uh, we are still in the early innings, folks, and we'll see if the liquidity comes off of Bitcoin and starts moving to the alts like Ethereum, XRP, Solana, Cardano, and much more. That's not a guarantee. I'm hoping it happens. I'm hoping we see a bit of a mini alt season. We have to watch the market closely this week and in the coming weeks and see what happens. Nevertheless, folks, like I said, we are in early innings. This is the tip of the iceberg, and these Bitcoin spot ETF issuers are buying Bitcoin as the cash, the inflows come in. So here, BlackRock now holds 11,439 Bitcoin worth over $497 million. Now, some of you may say, dude, that's peanuts, that's nothing. But remember, crawl, walk, run. They are gonna start mass marketing. They're gonna start amplifying uh, their ETF and start getting people to invest in it. It will take time. I always reference the gold chart. When the uh, gold ETF was passed, we didn't see some massive pump, folks, right then and there in that month. It took a few months and then, boom, take off, right? Similar move is going to happen here for Bitcoin and crypto. So we have to be patient. We have to look at the data such as this and position ourselves accordingly. Now, here's an example of the awareness building. BlackRock has updated their website homepage to highlight the new Bitcoin spot ETF. Clearly, it's important to them. So has Fidelity. And you can imagine the other issuers are going to do the same thing. And BlackRock also released a new ad. And this looks like an ad for boomers. <laughs> Here, Eric Balkanis said, this is how you market to rich boomers, folks. The calm disposition, easy to understand, invitation case, soft new age music, suit with no tie, everything about it says it's okay now. The adults are here. So once again, folks, mass marketing has to ramp up. We've seen ads from different folks. And I'll be interviewing um, Matt Hogan, who's often been a guest on this podcast from Bitwise, and they have a, one of the best performing uh, ETFs out there. They have the lowest fees. I'm, and I'm going to talk to them about their marketing plan and what they're going to do. So I'm going to get you guys some insights. But folks, like I said, early innings, we are at the beginning here. This thing has to ramp up, and it's amazing what's happening. James Seyfert also weighed in on the BlackRock ad saying, BlackRock's Bitcoin pitch coming to cable TV news, antiques road show ex episodes, and the Weather Channel near you. So folks, don't be surprised if we see a Bitcoin ETF Super Bowl ad. It's certainly possible. Now, I know there's been... Um, you know, some not so good things that have come out from crypto Super Bowl ads and, you know, screw Sam Bankman Freed. He's the idiot that messed up a lot of things. But um, look, as Eric Balkan has said here, the adults are in the room. And this is a theme I've talked about for a while in different interviews that look, BlackRock and Wall Street, these are the guys who are experienced, who have the insurance, the assurance, the proper cust custody services, and they're not here to play games. Um, they have all the white glove service and much more. And, you know, you're not going to see 
crazy stuff like what happened when FTX happened here. So um, one could argue we are turning a new leaf, right? And uh, even if a Bitcoin spot ETF Super Bowl ad happens, it's not a bad omen. So uh, I'm excited, folks. Um, now, I want to highlight something. Today, there was a bunch of weird XRP transactions highlighted by Whale Alert. I've often cited data from Whale Alert because they highlight the movement of crypto because everything's on chain, whether it be USDT, Bitcoin, XRP, or whatever crypto. And some people were going crazy. There was a lot of FUD. People are like, oh my God, look, 26 billion in XRP just got moved. Oh, oh no, XRP is centralized and so forth. But it was all fake data. It was an error. So here, Whale Alert, uh, they said there is an issue with properly reading the Ripple node response resulting in a few wrong posts. We fixed the issue. So the reason why I'm sharing with you uh, this information is just there was a ton of FUD that started popping up. And I wanted to highlight that this was all as a result of bad reporting from Whale Alert. So nobody is moving 50 billion XRP all of a sudden from this wallet to Bitfinex and all that jazz. Uh, it was all just nonsense. So watch out for the FUD is why I'm sharing this information. Now, folks, something I want to highlight, and this is important because we've had Jamie Dimon, Elizabeth Warren, and Gary Gensler all saying over the past few months, oh, crypto is only used for, by scammers and money launderers. And all of a sudden, the Wall Street Journal just reported this week, what's in those huge suitcases? $125 million in cash. A network of smugglers moved more than $125 million from London to Dubai, flying business class to gain extra luggage allowances. Wait, people use fiat currencies for money laundering? Oh my God, I, I, Elizabeth Warren and Jamie Dimon and Gary Gensler told me it was only crypto. Oh my gosh. This is the lies we've been dealing with, the false narratives, right? This is why we have to fight back. We have to use social media. We have to put out content and highlight the lies and hypocrisy of these people. You know, Paul Grewal of, uh, <laughs> of uh, Coinbase, he said here, but I thought it's all crypto's fault, right? <laughs> Question mark. Uh, Nate Garachi, who's president of the ETF store, said, how can this be? I was told this only happens with crypto. <laughs> but folks, this is why financial education is important. Um, this is why you have to do your own research, right? You don't take the statements of Elizabeth Warren, Jamie Dimon, Gary Gensler at face value. You have to go research and understand how markets work, how how money works, how the world actually works. The fact is before crypto existed, money laundering was done in cash and it's still done in cash largely, largely, probably like 20X more than what is done in crypto. The data shows that. Not to mention precious metals, right? Can be used, anything of value can be used in money laundering. So people are still trying to move cash to launder money. Why didn't these guys use crypto if it's so easy? Right, according to Gary Gensler and Elizabeth Warren, it's so easy to use crypto to launder money. Uh, it's actually not because all the data is on chain. And if your wallet gets flagged, you're done because we know where it's coming from. All the exchanges now use KYC AML, right? So th this this is why, folks, I, I take time to put out the news and the facts and also focus in on what Jamie Dimon, Elizabeth Warren, and Gary Gensler are doing because we are in a fight and a lot of it's narratives and they are trying to fool the public at large. It's not us who are financially educated. It's the people who are not paying attention, who are looking at this thing passively. They're just walking by reading headlines. And unfortunately, they may take Jamie Dimon's word uh, on as, at face value, Elizabeth Warren as well, right? Because they don't know what's happening behind the scenes. But clearly, folks... Uh, the false narrative that crypto is the primary cause of, cause of money laundering is false. Money laundering has been going on for a long time, and it has been done and is still being done primarily in cash and largely in cash. Well, folks, a uh, quick word from our sponsor, and that is Uphold. Uphold is a great platform where you can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. You can also trade precious metals on this platform. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. They have stable coins and much more. They have a great platform, great app. Best of all, folks, they are fully reserved. They have transparency reports, so you can go look at those audits for yourself. They don't co-mingle or lend your funds out. They are a safe platform. I've been using them since 2018. I've interviewed the CEO, the CFO, so I trust this platform. I can vouch for it. So if you'd like to learn more about Uphold, 
please visit the link in the description. Now, I want to share some uh, funding news. This is news I love to share with you guys because it shows capital is coming into the market. You have investors globally investing in the tokens as well as the companies building the infrastructure of the market. And I've often posed the question to get you to think about why would they be investing in companies that are building infrastructure for the crypto market? Why? There's some people who are saying crypto is good, it's dead. It's, you know, <laughs> go back to the headlines in 2022, right? You saw all these things, crypto is dead, crypto is done, blah, 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 right? They know it's just market cycles. They know on the horizon, blockchain, crypto, it's all here to stay. It's a new asset class. There's money to be made here. That's why they are investing in it. So there's quite a few things to highlight here. Crypto VCs have begun the year with a bevy of investments in startups that somehow connect crypto and AI, part of a broader belief that AI will be transformative, a transformative force in tech. Now, I've stated, guys, over the, over the past year that I believe AI will be a narrative in this upcoming cycle. I do own some AI-specific crypto tokens such as Render and Fetch.ai. I bought those at the dip, you know, at the bottom of the market. They're up now. They actually look, you know, I could take profits I, if I want, but I'm holding for uh, higher highs and higher prices, of course. But uh, here, let me continue. Many of the project's closing rounds are yet to have a revenue-generating product, and to some, the AI investing boom may smell like former times where simply attaching the term blockchain to a project could help close a deal. Still, the investor interest is real. AI found a prominent place in the 2024 big ideas for the behemoth VC fund A16Z Crypto, and AI-connected startups are leading the way in early 2024 startup funding. So this is something you want to take note of, right, folks? You want to look at what are the big money like A16Z and all these guys are doing. They're looking at AI uh, themed tokens. So once again, you got to do your own research. It doesn't mean you should just jump in because you see A16Z, but go look at the projects, right? Um, gaming studio Arena X Labs raised $6 million this week. The lab created AI Arena, a PVP game that intends to use gaming as a medium to teach their audience how to use AI. In the game, players acquire NFT fighters who they train through imitation learning, essentially teaching a bot to mimic what the player says to do. Framework Ventures led the round, which also drew participation from 7X Ventures, Exterio, FunPlus, and more strategic ventures. Character X raised $2.8 million this week to continue building its so-called synthetic social network. Its mobile app lets users chat with a range of AI chatbots with different backstories. That's interesting. Uh, Spark also participated in a $3.5 million funding round for AI marketplace Tada. Yeah, TA hyphen DA. The startups aims to sell data from AI companies to train their models, and it uses blockchain technology to keep costs down and ensure transparency with its data. So folks, I've often talked about blockchain will be needed to uh, police AI. And we saw Polygon, they partnered with the Fox News Corporation. I think it was this past week they announced that where they're going to fight AI deep fakes. And I think that's going to be a big problem, especially with the political cycle that's coming up in the elections. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, this is a solution that can be rolled out. I believe social media profiles need to be on the blockchain as well. You know, you create a profile, it's on the blockchain, um, you have the private key, and this way, if there are impersonators and fakes that pop up, uh, you know, they can be easily flagged by the community. Hey, you're not on the blockchain. You don't match the origin uh, profile. And, you know, I think that's the future, guys. Blockchain will be the solution. So you're going to see a convergence of AI and blockchain, which is interesting. So in your research as to which projects you want to invest in tokens, you know, you want to take a look at, at these things, guys. So. Uh, we got some more details here. I'll, I'll give you the other notable fundraisers. Pontem raised $6 million in a round co-led by Lightspeed and Faction for its studio developing, helping developers build in Move. Move is a programming language first developed by Meta for its Ernst Wild DM blockchain that is now used by Layer 1's Aptos and Sue. Uh, Web3 music streaming platform and music NFT marketplace Tune.fm cashed in a $20 million investment from LDA Capital. Binance led a $15 million round in gaming studio Skyarc. Crypto custodian and staking services provider Finnoa, if I'm saying that right, announced a $15 million strategic uh, round led by Maven and Balderton. So folks, companies are getting 
funds, right? So if you have an idea, this is the time to go to these VC firms and pitch your idea. You got a company, you got a project. Um, and once again, look at AI blockchain projects, you know, do your research, of course. Now, folks, I want to highlight something that was making the rounds. Dave Portnoy, if you don't know who he is, the founder of Barstool Sports, uh, <laughs> he put out uh, a video this weekend and it's hilarious. The title of it is Emergency <laughs> Press Conference. I keep getting face effed by Bitcoin. <laughs> it's actually hilarious. He did a good job because he highlighted the, his conversations with the Winklevoss twins back in 2021, I believe it is. And, um, but the main takeaway, if you guys go watch the video, aside from it being funny, is that Dave is a Taurus, right? He didn't do his research. He took third party uh, information. Somebody said, oh, yeah, you know, buy Bitcoin and so forth. And he's like, OK, dude, I'll put a half a million dollars in. And of course, he doesn't understand the market cycles. He sells at the wrong time and he gets wrecked. Right. Um, and this is why even if you, you're a millionaire, you need to do your research because you could lose your money, whether you're, you're putting in 10,000, 100,000, a million, whatever, right? You will lose your money if you don't do your research. You have to understand the market cycles. You have the fundamental. He doesn't get that. Dave is not taking time to study the chart. So let this be a lesson, folks, that this is why you need to understand this thing. Take 10 to 20 hours or whatever it is, research it, understand how the blockchain works, understand how the market cycles have played out. What are the key drivers? This is, I try to share this knowledge on the podcast, right? I've often talked about the money printer, global liquidity, and, and impacting the uh, prices of assets. And that includes crypto, understanding buy the rumor, sell the news event. That's I started the podcast talking about Bitcoin's price. What is happening here? Why are we seeing a pullback? Buy the rumor, sell the news. Uh, this is something that exists in tra tradified markets, not just in crypto. And these are fundamentals you have to understand in the market. So it's important to, once again, guys, do your research, study. Um, even the things I'm saying to you here on the podcast, go validate them. Go, you know, research and, and see, hey, is Tony telling me the right thing? Is this actually right? Right. I, I often obviously share my sources, so I'm not making stuff up or, you know, just talking to you and you're like a talking head and, and not giving you the sources or telling you where it's from. So I try to share the facts and my sources. That's important. I'm not here to play around. I'm here to make money. And I'm, I'm certainly trying to help some of you make some money, too. And hopefully um, you have in these market cycles. Now, uh. Alex Mashinsky, this scumbag, um, apparently he has failed to pay his lawyers and they are withdrawing from the case. So this is uh, good news in a way, right? Because Alex and Sam Beckman-Fried, I think, should share a jail cell. They're both scammers, both liars. Uh, you know, I, I had Alex on the podcast for years. Man was lying straight to my face, telling people, oh, yeah, it's OK. Come put your funds on. You can earn this and that. Obviously, uh, he was running a big scam. And of course, Gary Genson, the SEC, failed to stop him until the whole thing collapsed. So really, really pathetic. Now, guys, tomorrow morning, I'll be publishing my interview with Hugo Filion, who is the CEO, co-founder and CEO of Flare Networks. Folks, you don't want to miss this. There's a huge announcement coming from Flare tomorrow. They're partnering with a big name. And uh, Hugo and I talk about it. So uh, all the latest on what's happening with Flare and F assets and staking and much more. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you got the notification bell enabled. Guys, thank you for watching and listening. Um, I please, please, please ask you to please subscribe to my free email newsletter. Please follow me on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. All the links are in the description. It doesn't take a dollar out of your pocket. It's all free just to follow, just to subscribe. Folks, it really supports the podcast. Once again, it doesn't cost you anything. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate you guys. And I'll talk to you all later.